Punk Revolution now. Today we are going to be reviewing Moses Sumney's newest album, Grey. Moses Sumney has been a pretty interesting radar. Yeah, artist on my radar, okay? So, interesting background. Um, didn't really learn any musical instruments until he was a bit older than your typical musician. He he had his parents were from Ghana. He actually moved to Ghana at ten years old, so he so he lived in Ghana for six years. Ends up moving to LA to really start his musical career, and that is where he just immediately gets a ton of attention from record labels. Record labels are throwing deals at him, which is unheard of because. I know musicians who've been grinding for freaking decades and they don't get any attention from record labels. And then Moses Sumney right out of the gate gets a ton of attention from record labels, unheard of. And even more weird is that he turned down a lot of record deals to focus on himself as an artist and harvest his own artistic identity. What the fuck? Weird, interesting background, cool stuff. But what is he doing musically, okay? What is going on? Is he all that talented as the music industry says? Why is he getting all this attention from the industry? Let's start by taking a look at the album cover and we will figure it all out from there. Well, what kind of immediately sticks out about this album cover is he's got a nice butt sticking out. Um, okay, obviously, like this, this kind of some of the shades and colors in this photo is gray. Hence, the album cover is the album, album title gray, so it's a gray cover with a big ass sticking out. What the fuck is going on here? Anyways, I don't really know, folks. I don't know what to make of this cover. It's cool, but let's just go ahead and talk about the music. Get the ass out of my face. Quite the opposite of what I'm usually saying. Anyways, so... What is going on? Well, you know, honestly, folks, there were just so many albums that came out this past week. Charlie XCX, Perfume Genius, Future, Young Lean. Um, I don't know, there's, and some others I marked. Like, there, just a ton came out, okay? So Moses Sumney wasn't really one I, like, I prioritized. I thought maybe I wasn't even gonna get around to reviewing it, you know? So I just listened, like, okay, maybe I'll review it, maybe I won't. And then it's just like, what? Whoa! It just immediately caught my attention, like, wait a second, this album is freaking gorgeous. Like, Moses Sumney is fucking talented. His voice is one of the best voices I've heard in years. Okay, he has a gorgeous falsetto that I say is, like, comparable to, like, the quality of Tom York's falsetto, but I would say um, Moses Sumney incorporates more, like, jazzy melodies and a little bit more like soul influence in his falsetto. It's just absolutely gorgeous, full of emotion, full of passion, beautiful, stunning vocals, first off. Second off, the instrumentation here, the production on this album is jaw-droppingly stunning. Okay, tons of musicians coming together to collaborate on this album. We got we got Thundercat, freaking Matt DeMarco, freaking James Blake, freaking uh, Daniel Lopatin, AKA, 10 Tricks Point Never producing a lot of this album, which certainly comes, you can certainly hear that influence, uh, which is very cool. I mean, the list of musicians that worked on this album is just massive. This is a huge production and you can hear it. It's so fucking epic. It literally sounds like the gates of heaven opening up these massive synths that are just so gorgeous, like this, you know, big swelling synths that sound like heavenly. And then you got this gorgeous, angelic voice of Moses Sumney singing these beautiful, jazzy, really strange melodies on top of it. These melodies are super unconventional. You can tell that he has an unconventional background as a musician, okay? He, like I said, didn't learn really any mus musical instruments until he was much older than your typical musician. A lot of his musical background was from singing melodies a cappella, which I think plays a big role in why his melodies are so complex, very complex, almost feels improvised, super jazzy, gorgeous stuff. Love it. And I mean, the production, just so many, there's gorgeous string sections that come in, a little beautiful harp, literally feels heavenly and like, it's gorgeous. So lyrically, this album, well, the album is titled Grey, and he's really gonna be exploring this concept of gray throughout this album. Not so much talking about, oh, gray is a cool color. No, he's gonna be saying, you know, gray is kind of an ambiguous color, complex, not black, not white. It's like in between, mysterious kind of color. Uh, discussing multiplicities of human beings and how they have complex emotions and it's hard to categorize someone. You know, lots of critiquing of the concept of masculinity, trying to box someone in as masculine. Um, lots of, you know, just kind of, lots of ro like romantic songs 
songs, relationship songs about complex relationships that are also not so black and white, like the song Polly, which sounds like a song about being in love with someone who's polyamorous and the emotions that come along with that. So pretty cool stuff. Good. Good lyrics too that also fit really well with the emotional vocal delivery. And one also really, really, really cool stuff thing about this album is like I mentioned, Daniel Lopatin, AKA 103 Point Never, plays a huge role in producing this album and you can absolutely hear it. Sometimes it sounds like a straight up 103 Point Never album if 103 Point Never wanted to just kind of make an album that sounded as beautiful as he and heavenly as possible and then have a gorgeous vocalist sing falsetto over the whole thing. Brilliant! It's wonderful! And it's just complex! Some of these songs remind me of Captain Beefheart's Trout Mask replica. They're so strange in terms of the structure and the crazy, jazzy melodies that are impossible to follow. It's just extremely... This is over an hour long of just rich, gorgeous music! It's beautiful! Very, if you don't even, if this isn't your cup of tea, and I think some people might find it boring because it's over an hour long of pretty gentle, beautiful music. Uh, if it's not your cup of tea, you can still at least acknowledge this is a technically extremely impressive album. Gorgeous stuff. I'm gonna give this a 9.3 out of 10. Do not let you, this slip under your radar. I'm a little frustrated that all these other poppy, you know, mainstream, big, bigger names in the music industry albums came out at the same time because I'm afraid this one is gonna go under the fucking... What is the, under the fucking table? What's it? It's gonna go under the radar, whatever. So, talented, talented musician. Great stuff, folks. I don't know, I don't know, that's all I gotta say. Like, cool. Just, just, it just warms my, it just warms my heart. Whatever, I don't know what that means. Anyways, go ahead and like and subscribe and comment and blah, 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 blah. Thank you for watching. Moses Sumney, 9.3 out of 10. I'm gonna get out of here now. Punk Revolution now.